Item number, SCP-781, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-781 is to be contained within a reinforced cell, with a buffer zone at least 25 meters by 25 meters surrounding it. Subject cells should include a bed, bathroom, and limited forms of entertainment as approved. As soon as subject initiates sleep, usually at around 20 hundred hours. All personnel present in the main containment chamber should evacuate. All personnel are prohibited from interfering with any situation within SCP-781's chamber between 20 hundred and 07 hundred hours, despite any pleas for aid or attention from SCP-781. SCP-781 is to be interviewed each morning at 07 hundred hours by Dr. Glass. Any personnel seeing SCP-781 in their dreams are to report to Dr. Glass for documentation. SCP-781's remains should be collected and placed upon the middle of his containment chamber after any incident resulting in its death. Description SCP-781 appears to be a human male of Mediterranean descent, approximately years old as of 10. However, when he was first recovered in 97, he appeared to be approximately years old. Autopsies performed on the subject have determined SCP-781 to be physiologically identical to average humans. The reasons for any anomalies surrounding SCP-781, including decreased rate of aging, are unknown. It is thought that, while asleep, SCP-781 involuntarily manifests his own dream content into a physical form. The majority of these manifestations are hostile and highly dangerous, and on average, SCP-781 is killed three times per week. Testing using D-Class personnel shows that these manifestations specifically target SCP-781 over other potential victims. but are capable of harming others should they attempt to interfere. It seems that though it is required that SCP-781 be asleep to create manifestations, it is not required that he continue sleeping for their continued existence. Thankfully, these manifestations are not wholly independent of their creator, and always remain relatively close to SCP-781, up to a range of about 9 meters. Manifestations that are even partly forced out of this range immediately disappear entirely. Manifestations seem to linger upwards of five minutes even after SCP-781's physical death. Lastly, and importantly, it is to be noted that SCP-781 seems capable of auto-resurrection. Though the subject does not exhibit resistance to injury or death beyond the limits of a normal human, 12 hours after SCP-781's physical death, any remains of its corpse disappear. Another 12 hours later, a fully healthy SCP-781 appears within 10 meters of the place of its previous death. Further Notes While SCP-781 seemed to display no control over his own dream manifestations, Testing has shown that he is capable of perceiving and manipulating the dreams of sleeping subjects in his vicinity. This ability was helpful in determining the source of SCP-781's manifestations. Document 781-1 Most of SCP-781's nighttime manifestations are hostile to SCP-781 and are quick to cause him harm. The majority of manifestations never repeat themselves but there have been cases where reoccurring manifestations have occurred. The following is a list of some of the manifestations seen more than once. Sewage bursting from the floor, accompanied by a seemingly unending swarm of rats, which quickly overwhelm SCP-781 and proceed to devour him alive, leaving only bones and bits of flesh, has been observed twice. A large woman holding a hose which seems to extend from the ground, which she forcibly inserts into SCP-781's throat. The hose seems to expel a thick white liquid, which the woman uses to drown SCP-781, has appeared twice. 
a largely humanoid figure about 4.57 meters, or 15 feet tall, made up of a transparent and highly acidic substance, has appeared twice, both times after interviews with personnel other than Dr. Glass, tends to grapple SCP-781 in its arms until death due to major acid burns or suffocation. A large floating mass, with several tendrils bearing sharp needle-like spines, which forcibly drew SCP-781 into it. SCP-781 died two hours later from blood loss, appeared three times in the space of a month, but has not been seen since. An old woman with rotting flesh, which attacks SCP-781 with her teeth and nails. Typically, SCP-781 is able to fight back, but almost always sustains heavy wounds, which require it to be euthanized by personnel, has appeared three times. A man wearing a surgical mask, who straps SCP-781 to its bed and proceeds to slice its abdomen open with a scalpel, removing several organs, has appeared three times, each time after an autopsy was performed on SCP-781. A statue resembling Data Expunged is not observed physically harming SCP-781, but seems to cause the subject great distress, and often, SCP-781 has passed out from hyperventilation at the site of this manifestation. This particular manifestation has appeared four times now, starting on the day SCP-781 was exposed to Data Expunged. Addendum 781-1 See Evaluation Log 781 for extended psychological evaluation and testing. Evaluation Log 781 Evaluation Note 781-1 Psychological analysis shows subject to be highly forgetful about personal events in general, but even more so on those leading to his death. His memory repression was likely developed as a coping mechanism to deal with his frequent painful deaths. In an attempt to aid the development of his mental health, security personnel on nightly detail are hereby ordered to defend SCP-781 from his manifestations, if possible. It is my hope that perhaps with some treatment and reprieve from the nightly attacks, SCP-781's dreams will not be manifested as hostile. Dr. Glass Evaluation Note 781-2 SCP-781's mood and mental health finally seem to be improving. He has been regularly cheerful as of late, has begun to request company, and has become increasingly open with his thoughts. Furthermore, SCP-781 expresses gratitude of the Foundation's interference on his behalf. However, the nightly attacks continue at the same intensity, and no significant progress has been made with the subject's frequent memory lapses. Dr. Glass Evaluation Note 781-3 Previous questioning about SCP-781's origin has been fruitless, but today, the subject confided that he believes himself to be from where dreams come. The subject seems to believe there is a specific reason to his existence here, outside the dream world, and that it may be linked to his recurring attacks. Dr. Glass Evaluation Note 781-4 under my command, testing for possible uses of SCP-781 is ongoing. It appears SCP-781 is not able to be used as a reusable source of human organs, as all parts of SCP-781 disappear 12 hours after its death, even if they have been preserved or made functional within a different body. Further research is necessary. Dr. Evaluation Note 781-5 on all trials, it seems SCP-781 returns perfectly healthy despite mode of death. When exposed to mundane toxins, SCP-781 succumbed as normal, but as always, returned perfectly healthy. Proposals to use SCP-781 as a reusable D-Class personnel are pending, though O5 raised concerns of exposing an untrusted and potentially immortal subject to sensitive information. Having a single, genetically identical subject who could later expound on his experiences would be a great asset to future research in the case of fatal SCPs. Dr. 
Evaluation Note 781-6. Subject had to be terminated during the course of an interview by Dr. Dr. was, during the interview, attempting to question SCP-781 about some of the reoccurring manifestations observed. At first, subject merely stated that it didn't remember anything as usual. But as Dr. continued to press the subject for information, SCP-781 began to show signs of hostility, eventually coming to sadistically describe the mental and physical tortures it wished to inflict upon the Dr. After further pressing by Dr. SCP-781 violently stabbed Dr. in the throat with a pen, before being quickly terminated by security agents. As this outburst is the first sign of anger or hostility SCP-781 has shown, it is perhaps prudent to refrain from questioning SCP-781 further about its nightmares. Dr. Glass and Log Addendum 781-2 When introduced to SCP-452's presence, both SCP-781 and SCP-452 showed signs of agitation and distress. When questioned, SCP-781 merely stated that spiders made him uneasy. When SCP-452's web was introduced to SCP-781, for the purpose of stopping SCP-781's dreams, testing had no unusual results until data expunged, resulting in 12 personnel casualties. Further testing between SCP-781 and SCP-452 are discontinued and SCP-781 should be kept from making physical contact with SCP-452's webs at all costs. Addendum 781-3 Testing SCP with SCP-781 as its subject had highly unusual results. After several tries, SCP-781 was able to completely control the smoke's composition, though it took him some time and considerable concentration. Further testing of SCP is prohibited, as giving SCP-781 the ability to create anything he wants is, for obvious reasons, greatly discouraged. Addendum 781-4 By orders of 05 as of 2000, personnel are no longer to interfere in SCP-781's nightly attacks. It has been determined that the personnel casualties and resource expenditure needed to protect SCP-781 can no longer be justified, as continued interference has only caused the manifestations to become more dangerous and volatile, and SCP-781's immortal nature has been fully proven in any case. Addendum 781-6 SCP-781 has been highly successful in controlling SCP-122. It could be the Foundation's advantage to use the controlled SCP-122 for data expunged. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-780, Seed Bead, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.